let's uh, introduce Mel. Thanks. I have to say, first of all, that I admire your diligence, uh, last speaker and last uh, day of the conference, so thanks for sticking around. So if you forgot Latin or you never took Latin, Navitas means energy. We uh, do a lot of work in military batteries. When you imagine that uh, Abrams tank going over a ditch at 60 miles an hour and firing at something, uh, you have to have a tough battery to be able to power all the electronics on board that tank. So I figured if we can make it tough enough for a tank that we could make it tough enough for a variety of commercial and industrial applications. So what we do is, unlike the major cell manufacturers like Exalt or A123 Systems or JCI, et cetera, uh, they're focused primarily on the automotive and the grid market. Uh, we are focused on more of the specialty battery markets where there are unique challenges in terms of temperature extremes, vibration, shock, unique features that are required. So we focus on that next tier of applications and uh, solve for each one of those applications with a unique battery solution. And we're kind of unique in that we're a small company but with big battery company expertise where we can do everything from basic powders, and we're funded by a variety of government agencies like the Department of Energy, Navy, Army, Air Force, all the way up to complete packs. A lot of our uh, expertise comes from the prior acquisition uh, of the government R&D division of A123 Systems. This team has built a who's who of battery packs for the likes of all the ground combat vendors, the automotive companies, the truck manufacturers. They even developed the kinetic kinetic energy recovery system for Formula One. So if you ever uh, seen anything in the news about a Formula One McLaren crashing into the wall at 200 miles an hour and having a lithium fire, well, you've never seen that, right? Well, that's because our team developed that pack. So uh, what I'm gonna focus on is uh, primarily the forklift market. Our focus is on class one and class two and class three forklifts. You're probably not familiar with these designations, so there are nice picture examples of a crown sit-down forklift at the top, a heister reach truck, you know, goes up 30, 30 feet in the air to grab something at Walmart or Costco, or uh, what's called a pallet jack or an order picker. That's a class three product. We spent over five years, in fact, uh, at our founding. This was our primary focus outside of the military market because it's, uh, the forklift market is the largest uh, non-automotive or non-transportation uh, market in lead-acid batteries, about $2 billion a year in North America alone in uh, lead-acid batteries. So uh, I'd like to introduce our star lifter uh, lithium-ion batteries. I'll tell you more about that. And perhaps the best way to showcase it and understand how it's installed, what it does, how it compares to lead-acid batteries is in this four-minute video. This was done by the Defense Logistics Agency. We have a deployment there of star lifters that are in a drag race against lead-acid batteries in the same model crown forklift trucks to make an assessment of what are the differences in performance between the star lifter and what they know as just regular lead-acid batteries. So I'll, I'll t also tell you that uh, you might recognize the voice. Uh, this video was produced by DLA Public Affairs the gentleman who did this video was a former executive producer for Mythbusters, and he brought on his narrator. So I, often when we show this video at the end, they're saying, I, 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 that voice is familiar to me. So that's, uh, that's who it is. So let's let it rip. In the world of moving military materials effectively and efficiently, the U.S. Department of Defense counts on the Defense Logistics Agency to carry a heavy load. DLA has distribution centers that receive, store, and send over 2,000 tons of goods every day. Welcome to DLA Distribution, Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Inside these mammoth buildings that cover over 10 million square feet of storage space, the forklifts are the workhorses that around the clock get the job done. Here in the Eastern Distribution Center alone, the forklifts traverse the equivalent of over 30 football fields. 
The power behind these forklifts are lead acid batteries, a technology that's been around for more than 100 years. They do the job, but their performance comes at a hefty price. The lead acid batteries weigh 2,200 pounds. They need to be extracted for recharging, and they need regular maintenance that can pose hazardous risks to the working staff. A battery's daily cycle is eight hours on the job, eight hours charging, and eight hours cooling before it can be inserted back into duty. It's time to find a better battery. We have been working with Navitas Systems to find a better power supply for our forklifts here at DLA. Today, we will be installing the first lithium ion batteries into our lifts. They will be going up against the old lead acid batteries that we have previously used. We are kicking this off today with a one year test and we are excited to see the results. The lithium ion system includes a 1,200 pound case, the 800 pound battery pack and the monitoring screen. Due to the lighter weight of the lithium ion batteries, the case is counterweighted to match the lead acid batteries. The modification and installation process takes less than an hour per forklift. Some of the advantages of this new technology are immediately evident. First of all, we never have to remove the batteries from the forklifts. Charging times are about an hour, one eighth the time to fully charge a lead acid battery. Additionally, the new battery packs are sealed and it eliminates the hazardous exposure of refilling the old battery cells. This all means fewer lithium ion batteries are required in our inventory and allows us to phase out the old lead acid battery exchange system. Here are our competitors, fully charged and ready to go. On the left, we have the old lead acid legend. On the right, we have the lithium ion lightweight. Side by side, these will be put to the test. Let the competition begin. Over the next year, real world testing will break these batteries down. Their speed, their strength, their endurance, and their ability to handle winter's coldest temperatures will also be evaluated. Early laboratory results show the lithium ion packs will be up to the challenge and then some. Expectations are that the long tooth lead acid batteries days are numbered. Day one is in the books and the data is rolling in. DLA is thrilled to be involved with new technology. We believe that the test will result in universal acceptance and adaptation. As always, DLA strives to find solutions to better support the mission and America's warfighters. We showed that video at a recent defense uh, conference and a, uh, the number two guy at the Pentagon came to see it, really liked it. He said, I heard that's a one year trial though. It seems to me that the benefits of this are incredibly obvious. And I said, uh, sir, you're absolutely right. In fact, after the first month of this trial, uh, the DLA decided that they're gonna put it into their second largest worldwide site. So we're gonna be out there next week to do the kickoff for that. Uh, so the applications we like, you know, we recognize that it's not a zero sum game. Of course, lead acid batteries are gonna be around for a long time because they're very cheap. Lead acid, uh, lithium batteries, of course, new technology, more expensive. Uh, but for one shift applications, occasional use, lead acid's gonna be fine. But that top 20% of the market, that's uh, very intense in terms of two and three shift applications. Uh, areas, things like cold temperature warehouses where lead acid batteries have a 40% decline in runtime. Uh, our batteries don't suffer that uh, same decline in runtime at cold temperatures. Our natural applications uh, for the Starlifter. So you saw in the video, uh, we have different counterweight uh, trays. The only thing that lithium's lousy at in this application is, is it's light and it's small. So to put it back into the dimension and the weight expected of the forklift to keep it from tipping, when it's bringing up the load, you have to bring that weight back. Uh, there's a style of doing that where some vendors are putting uh, heavy weight in coincidence in close proximity within the battery box. Our approach is very different. We have the standard lithium uh, form factor. We can put in amp hour capacities, whatever you want, up to the fixed uh, space of that black box there. And then we have different counterweight sleeves that match the uh, popular lead acid form factors when you combine that with the lithium uh, battery's weight. The, uh, the key to the system is our battery management system that's in the lower corner. That's of our own design. We make that within house, uh, within our printed circuit board manufacturing line. Uh, that's really the jewel of the company, so we didn't want to have that contract manufactured, so we take care of that ourselves. And then because a lead acid battery in a forklift, the forklift battery gauge is expecting lead acid and its voltage decline, that uh, battery gauge uh, does not 
makes sense when you're putting a lithium battery in it because a lithium battery such as ours starts at a higher voltage and it stays at that voltage from the beginning of the shift to the end of the shift. So what you see at right is our multicolored graphical user interface that the driver will look at and it tells him to a single percentage point how much battery life he has remaining in the, uh, in the star lifter. So you also say that going into a, a counterweight, literally this is the most bulletproof battery on the marketplace. If you saw our 48 volt counterweight, uh, it's about that thick on its sides and weighs about 4,000 pounds. <laughs> so uh, you're not gonna put a forklift blade through this battery. Uh, you can see by way of example there, uh, the different sizes in the foreground is a 36 volt battery. So our black battery is within that green uh, counterweight that goes into the popular reach trucks. Uh, right in the middle, that green uh, square box, that's a sit down forklift and that's that heavy one that I was talking about. And to its left is the uh, star lifter battery that goes within that. And then uh, to the far left, you see that black 24 volt battery. There are different sizes of of 24 volt platforms like order pickers, so you see different size counterweights to make that 24 volt battery work compatibly. Uh, we are proud to uh, say that we're the only one in the industry that has uh, passed UL. We're UL recognized for our class one, class two, and class three uh, battery platforms for all three voltages, 24 volt, 36, and 48 volt. And the gauntlet of tests that we went through were pretty severe. It was a pretty cool program with UL that uh, because we had so many voltages, so many amp hour sizes, and classes of batteries that we wanted to test concurrently, it was a little too much for UL at their headquarters, so we actually distributed them to different labs across the United States, so those tests were done concurrently. But you can see here some of the severe tests, uh, overcharge, short circuit, uh, turning the battery, rotating it around, dropping it from three feet, and see what happens, puncturing it, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, one of them was this test where we actually had to cut a hole through the counterweight, first of all, and then cut a hole through our steel battery case so a nail ramrod would go right through it. And this was done at uh, UL's labs in Chicago, uh, witnessed by a, a forklift manufacturer, uh, where you then stick a nail into the cell and you stimulate a short circuit condition. And the question that the forklift OEM says, what is this gonna do? Is this gonna turn into a 14-foot flare and run for 40 hours? What is it gonna do? So the, uh, the battery passed with flying colors. Uh, I've seen a guy walk by in my office with one of those vapes, you know, those give off more smoke than this thing did in two minutes. Uh, the net result was the uh, battery performed flawlessly, battery management system reported a fault. They took the affected cell out, as you could see there, the group of three pictures on the left, the punctured cell, perfectly normal, never went into thermal runaway, never melted or deformed, and then the picture to the right of those three uh, neighboring cells, totally unaffected and, uh, and worked flawlessly. So, the safest battery on the market. So kind of transitioning into kind of other approaches, we, we take an approach that's chemistry agnostic. So we're not like a cell manufacturer that uh, whatever, whatever, answer, whatever problem you have, we're gonna solve it with our single cell chemistry. We always look at what are the parameters of an application, this spider chart uh, indicating in, in this example, a military battery and then outlining what are those key performance parameters and then what are the different chemistry options present in terms of how do you best solve for that application. Uh, we know lithium pretty well. That uh, first picture is a lithium military vehicle battery. We've gotten about $20 million of funding from the US Army to develop two generations of that technology, working with Oshkosh, who won the recent contract, uh, $7 billion contract to develop the successor vehicle to the uh, Humvee called the Joint Like Tactical Vehicle. As, as you read down, we've also done uh, batteries, uh, other batteries for the Army. This is kind of a battery energy storage system that drives up to a forward operating base, and now you could export power to the base. Uh, we're also funded to do other work in terms of beyond lithium chemistry. So what that aircraft is, is that's the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Uh, we have a contract to do lithium sulfur battery for that important uh, uh, platform. We also do a variety of other batteries in deep cycle transportation. The Group 31 is the largest uh, non-automotive lead-acid battery by unit volume. We also do a variety of stationary outdoor and indoor uh, applications. People say, hey, lithium doesn't work well in cold temperatures. Well, those are lithium batteries on top of 11 mountains in Alaska that have been working flawlessly over the past three years, replacing lead-acid batteries that had failed over the course of the winter, leaving the FAA without the ability to uh, talk to aircraft flying over Alaska until the spring and the snows melted, and they can helicopter our batteries up and uh, get the lead-acid batteries down. 
By the way, you can tell that's Alaska because the solar panels are pointing towards the horizon to try to catch the three hours of photons in, uh, on December 21st. Uh, literally in a mission critical application, the next one, that's a, a rack system. We've sent 14 of these to NASA in support of a uh, new launch pad uh, at the Cape, and uh, that supports their uh, launch control and communications. It's a backup system for that. We've talked about Starlifter, and then uh, we're also doing things like outfitting uh, the fleet of ambulances in the city of Detroit with uh, lithium batteries so they can go key off and save fuel and, and reduce pollution. So. In, in summary, you know, all these things represent a complex equation. How do you get long life? How do you get uh, maximum runtime? How do you keep it safe? How do you keep it reliable and robust against uh, things that can be thrown at it? Because, you know, when you're in the battery business, you're giving over a chemical factory in a box to someone and say, okay, you know, it's going to work. You've got to make sure it works. And then, of course, uh, solving for cost. That's a really tough set of trade-offs uh, to, to solve for. And there's an important realization that uh, it should take multiple tools in the toolkit. It's not just the hammer of the chemistry uh, and just one chemistry, but there's also different types of tools in terms of f choices on form factors, electronics, amp hour sizing, voltages, discharge rates, cooling and heating, and et cetera. And there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all approach. So I want to thank you for your attention. <laughs>